welcome welcome to the current detani show this is your friend and your host current detani and our guest for today is a very special person and that is anna ferrari anna ferrari will come and tell you something about herself and her own journey with the three principles so ladies and gentlemen here i present to you anna ferrari hello anna welcome Hi Karan thank you thank you for the warm welcome <laughs> Um I can tell you about Anna the identity I'm a the, the personality you know things like that Um Yeah I I I have the feeling that I lived a few lives on this lifetime and I had a um, I was very lucky to have, get a second chance and today i was driving my car and i was reflecting spontaneously on how well that term comes about a second chance and how much feeling it comes with it and so yeah i don't know exactly what to tell you to be honest um it's it's there is a lot my life has had a lot of things in in as a long term spiritual seeker and through the understanding of the principles now as i realize that i've been having insights for a long time and small level small jumps in level of consciousness where i saw that um the plays that my thoughts play into my experience and it was truly wonderful to come to that realization um at the beginning i came to that through the work of iron kati i don't know if you're familiar with her but she um one of her questions in her process is who do i be without that thought and the first time i asked myself that question who would i be without that thought it really felt like i had spent all of my life in a cold moldy dark room and all of a sudden i was walking out of into a beautiful garden and that did something for me that really did something um so then i kind of took on that tool and when i say i i mean my my personal mind my identified persona took on that tool and decided to use it to fix itself <laughs> so i would be constantly working on my thoughts and writing my thoughts down and but at the same time i wasn't that um i wasn't going that deep into the process that the work was um outlining and i thought that i was being you know lazy or or just you know there was always something to beat myself up with you know always and then later on i realized that if one thought is not true and another thought is not true maybe no thought is true and i didn't have to go through the process of inquiring and 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 looking through um the veracity of that thought so that gave me a little bit of a more laid back attitude and at some point i just found myself having the realization that i was letting the past define me and that the past didn't exist anymore so moving forward i could be whoever i wanted to who was that and all along the way i had little i have angels that's the best way i can say it because it's not as it's not short for me of a divine intervention the people that came with messages and sharings that really changed things for me um so when i realized the past didn't exist anymore and the future i could be whoever i want my personal mind again created this future 
person that I was going to be. <laughs> and I started working really hard and things got really started going really well and I grew in confidence and there was all sorts of really good things from that seemingly wrong appropriation of my ego over you know this idea of having a second chance and then later on you know after achieving after making more money after having you know having lost 30 kilos started my own business, realized that I was an artist, started painting nonstop and really feeling all those good things, there was always something that will be like still missing. So I thought, well, actually the way of achieving may not be the way to find what I'm really looking for. The way of achieving, the way, not, none of that. and. That's when I was a bit, okay, now what? And luckily enough, I, that's where I found the principles and the principles pointed to the only place where a good feeling, freedom of well-being is sustainable and transformational. And I am so, so grateful. Beautiful. Yeah, this is what I see. These principles, they are beyond our thoughts. Like as you said, what would I be beyond my thoughts? So just to get started, I would like to ask you, what are the three principles and how do they help us uh, improve our mental health? The three principles are a description. Is the ABC of how the human experience comes about, so to speak, if I may say that. I hope I'm not speaking out of my pay rate, my pay grade. Um, it's a description. Um, Without something um, that, without something very intelligent, none of this would really be encompassing the way it is. I have a, a lot of love for plants and I, this plant was particularly set in another place and I changed it and it's leaning towards that way. So there is something that is invisible and it's, it connects everything and everyone, even through the seemingly separation. Um, that it means I don't have to be my personal mind. I doesn't have to be controlling my breath, my heartbeat that is given to me freely and unconditionally. I don't even have to be a good person to receive heartbeat and a breath. So that's one of the things that really made me reconsider the way that I was looking at myself because it's like, well, if the intelligence of all things is giving me unconditionally, who am I to judge myself? So that gave me a lot of perspective. Great. And uh, I have seen so many people suffering from depression, stress, anxiety, and even they have had the understanding of the three principles. They know what is mind, thought, and consciousness. But still, things are not changing for them. So what do you think they need to make the change? My mom said to me, I don't know if she read it somewhere or she came up with that. I, I am very proud to say I had a very wise mother and <laughs> I think every mother is wise, but you know, mine is my mother. And she said to me, you cannot go where you want to go by hating where you are. 
you cannot go where you want to go by hating where you are. You cannot think that this place is not good and that later on it's going to be good and somehow you need to get there. So what that tells me is usually that we have a resistance to how we feel, we have a rejection for how we feel, and that we just innocently trying to get out of it, dig ourselves deeper into it. So one thing I saw recently in a session is that with my intellect, sometimes I want to get to the bottom of it. And that's how I get myself deeper into the mess. Because I'm I'm digging <laughs> innocently. And I'm creating more thoughts, more thoughts, more thoughts. And that is overwhelming. It, it feels more complex, more difficult. So, you know, the intelligence of all things, that's universal mind. And then you have consciousness which is the fact that we are aware that we're awake and aware of having an experience and then comes thought thought is what gave us the flavor of the experience i can be looking at something and thinking that it's beautiful and feeling the beauty or i can be looking at the same thing and thinking it's horrible and feeling the horrible horribleness of it now, with depression, my own experience, because I did went through years of depression, is that there was so much thinking towards self-judgment that it, I, just, it, I was flattened by it. It was too heavy. And because I didn't understand that those were thoughts that have no substance they were just ideas that i bought into it either because someone told me either because i fear meaning out of stuff or either because i like anything you know we have a very um clean mind when we come into the world and then this stuff can get to us you know um so that's what I think happens with depression. We get all these thoughts and we don't understand what they are. We think that they're an actual problem. And then we think about them. And you're talking with someone that did eight years of therapy in total. <laughs> so I went down that road and, and it did help because you find professionals that care and are good at listening. And that's the basis of what any professional in this caring, this understanding has to be. Just care and be a good listener. So I think that's one way to look about depression is to really see through the illusion of thinking, to see what thinking is made of. And, and then we don't have to listen to that voice. Yes. Uh, talking of depression, the way I see it, it becomes a state of mind that people are in. And that is happening because they are constantly caught up in their thinking. Yeah. And they don't realize that uh, they have the wisdom 24 7. The moment they let go of those thoughts, their wisdom will come shining through and guiding them. It's the insight that makes the change. The clarity yes. of mind. Yes. yes, because we can only hear things from within. Exactly. We need our own answers, not somebody else's. Yeah, recently I also was uh, talking to a therapist. Uh, she was a hypnotist and I don't know, life coach. So she was telling me that I would need uh, at least six months of therapy. So 
I just realized I'm not sick. <laughs> I'm okay. So I let go of my thoughts and I'm okay. You know? <laughs> so it's magical. You know, it's an illusion that we think that we are broken, but we are not. We are not. It's just thoughts and they can change any time. It's just that we have to let go. All right. Okay. And I also would like to ask you about uh, your journey. How did you discover the three principles and what change did they make in your life? Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say something to what you said before, because uh, a state of mind for me is a level of consciousness. And there is exactly. a level of consciousness where you identify with there is a level of consciousness where you identify with your thinking and you don't even know it. Exactly. And I, I I can relate to that. Uh, and what you know when letting go of the thoughts is what for me was a very puzzling. How do you do that? <laughs> but sometimes they they let go of you. Every day, even if you are in, in a depressed state of mind, every day your thoughts let, let go of you and you have a quiet and a calm mind, but we don't notice. So that's why, I, and, I, and I hear this from myself um, because it was said to me, it was pointed out to me through, I think it was Christine Hitt, that the first thing, or Linda Pransky, that you know, when someone is depressed, they just try to point them in that direction that they're actually moments that is not there's, that's not present. It's not there because when you make contact with that, it comes with a feeling. It comes with it's no thoughts, right? Because the thoughts let go of you, so there is no thoughts. So when you come in contact with that and you start paying attention to that in that direction, that feeling is like clear something and you have space in this insight. So I just wanted to go back to that because it came to me as you were sharing it. Um, about the principles, to be honest, now I see that I've always been in touch with the principles. I just didn't know it. And more and more, like, <laughs> I, you know, once upon a time, I was in a formless state. And then something happened. My parents got together and there was this tiny little thing, tiny little thing, the size of a pin. You know, if my mom would go to the doctor and the doctor would be like, oh, your baby is the size of an olive now. And three weeks, you know, six months later, it's the size of a watermelon. <laughs> so where I was out of the principle of mine, I wasn't. And then I think at age seven, eight, you know, the thinking minds keep, I think it could be earlier. Maybe any experts could know. But when my brother was, I'll have to ask him exactly how old he was. But he came to my mom and he said, Mom, I can talk without moving my lips. So he was aware of the voice in his head. He could, he realized he could think. And I only, this came back to me a week ago, by the way. So the principles were always in my life and the, the role of thought is where, you know, is like the human experience is really, 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 really compelling. You have a thought that makes you feel, you know, your body kind of lights up with all these feelings and emotions, sensations, and they feel real. So it becomes like a galvanized identity. And through the pain, through the suffering, you know, this instinct of searching and looking and finding out. First with the idea of fixing myself, then realizing that 
you know, I am broken. <laughs> and now back to, oh, okay. I'm actually a spiritual, I have a spiritual essence and that's more real than anything else. I tell myself I am. So that's another state of consciousness because you identify with something very different. So the principles, they've always been in my life. I honestly, now I feel almost greedy of how much insight I had over the years. And it's very tempting for me to try to tell you all at once, but I won't. <laughs> I won't. More precisely, it was a Michael Mills book. And then I, I went into seed and then I took breaks. And then a year ago, I was like, this is it. This is just, I need to deepen into this. Oh, what book was that? What was the Pardon? book? What was the book by Michael Neal that you read? I think it was The Inside Out. Inside Out. I think it was The Inside Out um, Revolution. Revolution. And yeah, it's actually, I actually still have it. <laughs> it was from the library, but it never got returned. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had to send them a check for that. But yeah, I was moving cities along, sorry. But yes, yeah, so inside our revolution. And of course, you know, he mentioned Sid and I, because I had that that kind of like, I was searching, you know, I was like a, one of those hunting dogs just with smelling and, and look, listening for truth because that's the other thing that I realize now, we all can hear truth. We all can hear truth. And I would just get this big box and I would read maybe 10 pages of it because that's all I needed to read. That's, that's what's already what was for me. And I think that's another reason why now, you know, I have a, a, um, a Facebook group and I call it Keep It Simple because I am afraid for this understanding to get covered with a lot of other stuff that is not necessary. This is very simple. It's just about being. Great, great. And uh, would you talk uh, about the nature of thought, like uh, how they come in our consciousness and that they are transient? Thought is, it's ama it amazes me, it really does. And I don't think I will ever, um, yeah, come to the end of the exploration. There is an aspect of thought that I don't understand, you know, thought with a capital H. Some people call it, I don't understand. I'm not at that, I'm not there, I don't know. I, I'm not even bothered with it. That's the other thing. When I don't understand something, I don't bother with it because using my intellect is not going to help me in, in that case. When it's time for me to understand it, I'll, I'll be easy. So I'm almost like waiting for the easy, the easy way uh, around things. Also, if I don't understand something, I don't argue with it because that's also my intellect. So. You know, one of the things that I realized a while back is that I could get by with very little thinking. That thinking is overrated. And, and thoughts, it's definitely what creates our experience. It's all, our experience is always coming from inside of us. I hear my thoughts, I see images, and 
yeah, it's definitely create a distorted image based on what the thinking is. Now, the thinking that it gets triggered is usually old thinking. It's thought that I've been carrying through time as part of my identity. That's why some things bother me and other things don't bother me. The things that bother me is because they're touching that I'm this person and I have to defend and protect. So those are the things that are upsetting. When there is fear, that's upsetting. One of my experiences with thought was I was, <clears throat> I was in a meditation retreat and, um, and I was in Thailand, I'm, I'm a meditator. And, and I was at a meditation retreat and we would sleep in wooden cabins and we have two meals a day and we would, there were no windows because it was so warm, there were no need for windows. And it was a very beautiful setting and very humble, very, very lovely. And I was still very much in my mind a lot and a lot of things, but by day two, I was going to sleep. It was a full moon and you could, it was like daylight outside. And I was with my back against the corner of my box, like afraid, afraid for my life because there were all these crazy images in my head. <laughs> and at some point I hear something along the lines that say, wait a minute, you are not in an episode of Lost. And something in me completely relaxed and I was like, kind of awake to where I was and I slept like a baby with no fear. So what happened for me was like all these images, all this, this sensation of danger, all the stuff that I was seeing, they were creating this distorted feeling. And I suddenly had this kind of moment of insight and it felt like waking up. I felt like I woke up to the room where I was, where before, where was I? So it's the insight that makes change. And uh, you were talking about uh, the book of Michael Neal. So would you share your experience with that book? I haven't read it in a few. <laughs> no one. <laughs> okay. All right. I have not read it in a long, actually my ex-husband has it now because I lend it to him and he said, can I keep it? <laughs> so I think we're all trying to keep the book, <laughs> like a token of, <laughs> um, I don't know, something makes sense because I, I, I was involved for 10 years with the work of Iron Katie. So I had a lot of work done on noticing the thoughts they were creating my experience. You know, uh, whatever the, the whole, and not, not only that, Katie has a list. She called it universal thoughts. So she has a list where over 30 years, she hears people say the same stuff over and over and over. So we all share those. So it's not like a, a new thing. So coming from that background into Michael Neal's talking about the experiences creating from the inside, that really resonated. But a lot further along the line, I really feel that Sydney Banks helped me find myself. What I was looking for in that seeking was myself. I was looking for myself, my inner self. And when he pointed to it being a beautiful feeling, suddenly something just really opened for me. And it's like, this is what I've been looking for. I am here. I found myself. 
and that started a whole new thing, you know, because this is ongoing world and it's not like you can say. But at the same time, at some point, sometimes I sit with that. I sit with the fact that, you know, because I come from the spiritual, with the spiritual background, self-realization was something that I had my eyes on to realize myself. And this understanding had brought that to me. And when you realize that self, you kind of feel different, connect different. And you're still a human being. Nothing, nothing really changes. But in essence, I am contented. When you talk about that self, if we are looking for that self, yes. do you think we can find it? All right. Um, the way I see it is like uh, that self, we could call it your authentic self or real self. It's what we are. And uh, if we just let go of our personal thinking, we are there. We, we all get there from time to time. We just don't realize it. Exactly. Uh, as a parent, okay, how do you see parenting and how do the principles uh, help you with parenting? <laughs> that's great. And I agree with you. I think that's who we are and we always are. It's not like we are and sometimes we're not. We always are. We just don't exactly. notice. Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. What, that's what there is there to be found. <laughs> not small thing <laughs> exactly. that's it we can't find it we are that actually yeah that's why going inside turning yes. towards yourself is the yes. only direction is the only mm -hmm. spiritual um prescription mm -hmm. right so people have been trying in different ways but the ego likes to appropriate these things to make itself into this idealized image or whatever it is, but that opens a whole different avenue of discussion. Um, as a mother, I think the reason, she is the reason why all of this is more important to me than ever. You know, I told you about my angels. And one angel, he was around 87 at the time maybe a little bit younger, 85. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt angels. you. When you say angels, what exactly do you mean? Are they like alive like, people? Like or? A person, like, yeah, yeah, alive people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Right. Um, like a person that comes and tells you something and it changes the course of your life. Something like that. So he, I went downstairs to pass on a message to him. I was working at the office uh, for him. And I went downstairs to pass on a message to him. And he called me and he said, um, okay, thank you. And he said, um, you got to get happy. You got to lose the weight and get happy. And now don't go back to the office. Go for a walk at the beach because the house was at the beach. So they go for a walk and it really touched me. And I went for a walk at the beach and I realized that I didn't know what happy was. That I didn't have a role model of happiness and that the only way that my daughter was going to be happy was if I was happy, authentically happy. Because kids can tell when we are happy, 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 and we are not. So that's what sparked more of this. And, you know, with this understanding, I still worry, I still fear project, you know, I still have thoughts about all that stuff. But more and more, I'm just knowing that um, she has the intelligence of life behind her as much as I do, as much as you do, as much as everyone does. We're never really alone. And that she's already in that place of well-being. Kids, you know, I felt like kids 
are born there. And then there is a certain moment where the mind kicks in and because they haven't found an adult that understands how the mind works and can meet them there and say, this is, this is, you know, it's like a big fork in the road. But these days I, I spend a lot of time with kids. I'm an art teacher for kids and I'm an art assistant facilitator for people with dementia. And, and what I see is they're already there. So if we don't, if they find a different um, mirror where, where we can say to them, you're a spiritual being, you're having a human experience, you have a good heart, a good nature, and you can, and you have wisdom and common sense to guide you because, you know, we know, actually I say this to kids and they're like, yep. So I think we, I'm very hopeful because we don't even, you know, for me, I lost myself and then I have to back all the way to find myself again. What I'm doing now is what my eight-year-old eight year old self wanted to do and wanted to be. I took a big detour and I came back to it. So kids these days, they face different challenges than ours, but I think the availability of the message about, you know, being in your heart, living from your heart, is it makes me really hopeful and this understanding as well because what i say before i really believe we can all hear truth we can all recognize ourselves in others as well yeah this is uh, something that i see it could be a relationship to, with your children, with your spouse. If you're caught up in your thinking, it's all about judgment about the other person or yourself. But when you're not caught up in your thinking, you have love and understanding. And also you have the answers that you're looking for. So things just flow. It's just about being present in the moment and allowing your, allowing your wisdom to guide you. I'm not a parent yet, so I'm not experienced, <laughs> you know, better. It, will, it certainly does a trick because I'm, you know, I realize that I am afraid sometimes. I project fears. If I see her spending too much time in technology, my mind is like, oh, she's not going to be a well-adjusted adult and you better start controlling that. And then I go and I bicker with her. And then we get into, you know, so, but it's as well an opportunity, you know, it's already, yeah. And on top of that, I am, I happen to have, have a very wise child. <laughs> How old is your child? She's 11. 11. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I say, I happen to have a very wise child, but I think every child is wise. Every child. True. True. And you also told me that you are also a teacher of arts. So as a teacher, uh, how do the principles help you? And like, I've also been a teacher. I still do teach. And I know how frustrating it could be when your students don't listen to you or when they don't learn. So how do you see teaching and uh, how do the principles help you with that? Well, to begin with, I'm, I'm an unofficial teacher because what happens is after that man told me to get happy and I, all these realizations about my past came about and I started my own business, I started painting when I never painted before. So I started painting every night for hours so i came to art in a very different way that a lot of people or in the same way i don't really know 
but and also to teaching because what happens is before the principles I was interested in the energy of play and the playfulness and then I was like oh mindfulness and playfulness and you know this is cool and a while back I realized that I'm, I'm an intuitive artist I'm not a trained artist and I think the way that I the reason why I set up these classes is because I want kids to preserve their the trust in themselves in, the, in that instinct in that artistic instinct that flow of creativity that just arises so that's that said when it comes to student um teacher i'm very relaxed i think i, I have a very small class at the moment and i'm building up um and the reason why i wanted to start small is because i just wanted to deal with the things that could come up for me i uh, you know sometimes i i have a bit of a i get very easily uh sensory overloaded so when there is a few people talking to me at the same time plus noise plus this plus that 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 can really throw me off it wears me down and actually I think it's one of the reasons why there is a bit of a um, teacher burnout. I don't know how it is in India but some classrooms here are very very busy and my daughter for example also spoke to me about her need to quiet to, to have a quiet and sort of a cleaner space to to feel her well-being to feel her okayness so i am yet to deal with that Karen. i don't know how many kids do you have but hats off i really appreciate the jobs the teachers do um and i just have my opinions that teaching should be a very different differently structured um organization to to prevent burnout because also a person that is tired or overwhelmed doesn't have the love the patient and the understanding that you know you were talking about before it's only human exactly i think uh teaching should be fun if students are not enjoying that so it's not likely to work and uh, a teacher has to go through many phases and i think what they need is love and understanding for themselves also for others beautiful all right there's a lovely uh, there's a lovely recording of sydney Bank called student teacher okay if you haven't if you haven't heard it i'll i'll share it with you because sure. it speaks about being a being a nice human being to your student being a you know, um, especially the ones that are like troublesome or I don't know, I don't mm -hmm. want to write la labels, but you know what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So I'll share it with you. Sure, I would love that. I would love that. Okay, last question that I would like to ask you is that, again, it's going to be a work relationship, but now it's about uh, spouse. So, uh, I see couples uh, having problems, fighting, arguing with each other, judging each other. So, what would you like to, uh, what words would you like to say for them? How can they improve their relationships? <laughs> oh my God. Well, you know, I think for me is where the personal realities and our own personal thoughts can create all this distortion because yeah I think that's where conflict that's the 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 origin of conflict that we think and believe what we think and we project it onto the other person and we create all this because there is not only like the 
my personal beliefs about what a partner should be or shouldn't be, but there's also the social context. And I think the world has become more open to people just being themselves and there's going to be a, yeah, the, the sense of freedom into being who you are and not want, not wanting to be changed. I, I suppose the conflict is, you could even see it as wisdom, you know, saying wrong way, wrong way, you turn, you turn. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, I would say read the George Bransky book, The Relationship Handbook, because that book is really good. And yeah, just understand the, the role of thought in into what you feel. Mm -hmm. Nobody can make you feel anything. It's only in your own thinking. Okay. I know that, you know, this might sound oversimplified, but it's the thing that's coming to me right now. So before we go, I would like to ask you to share your experience of losing 30 kg. Was it 30 mm -hmm. pounds or kilo? Kilo. Okay, kilo. would you share your experience with that? To be honest, when that man said to me, get happy, and I just thought, right. And because people ask me, how did you do it? And to be honest, the answer is I just got happier. That's the only answer I can give because I didn't really do anything different. I actually, well, I did, but I don't know. I just felt without that heaviness of judgment towards myself of the past. What happens is like, you know, like I say, moving forward, I could be whoever I want to be. Plus, I had a very vicious mind. And my grandmother and my mother, they both have weight issues. And there was this big judgment over being overweight in my family. And so at 25, I was, you know, <laughs> 25, I was good and, and healthy. And I had it all, but I didn't know it. Because in my mind, I was all those other things that my mind was telling me. So when I saw that, I saw that my mind was tricking me. I just felt like, no, 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 no. This is my second chance. I'm actually, you know, I felt like I, I felt cheated a little bit, that I had a great um, life and I didn't know it. So when, you know, not having the past define me, moving forward, I can be whoever I want to be. I just so well, I want to be fit. I want to be happy. You know, I'm, I'm 43 now. And at 37, I was like, oh, I'm going to have my midlife crisis a bit earlier. <laughs> so it just felt like being happier, giving myself good experiences and being a good example for my daughter, comfortable in my own skin. You know, why not be the best version of myself? My ego did took a little bit of that and, you know, it, it almost burned me out on the way. But now I understand that I'm always the best version of myself. I will, I've been always the best version of myself all the way through. I don't have to strive. If I appreciate what I have, that's it. That's the key. And that's the other reason, you know, what I said at the beginning, you cannot go where you want to go by hating where you are. But if you appreciate the good in your life, you're already there because the future is made of this. So with weight loss, I wish I could give an E, you know, an ABC, the ABC of it. But I think you need every person has to find out for themselves. And just really appreciate the opportunity to be here. And use it to do whatever they feel like doing, because this, like, that's what Sid says. This is a playground. This is our heaven on earth. What experiences do you want? Beautiful. This is what I was like learning from our scientific research that 
around 70% of the overweight is caused by emotional pain. So when we become happier, we let go of all the emotional pain. And when the pain goes away, we start losing weight. I, I'm gonna be honest, I'm still I still have thinking and thoughts around that. Okay. And I had a session with Christine Heat about it. I um mm -hmm. I don't know if you're part of the true principles global community. Um, but there, there is a recording of it. I still had um issues with it because thinking about that was my addiction. Thinking about image okay. and body weight was my addiction. And then I would drive myself i would lower my level of consciousness and then food was the way to get it up again mm -hmm. so even in that sense i and i think it was amy johnson's as well who helped me see that the the reaching out for food was uh with a positive intent it was it was me trying to make myself feel better it doesn't last for long, you know, it's a high and then you come down and all of that. But it's true what you're saying that when you feel good, you don't have to cope, you don't have to compensate. You don't have to elevate yourself with something. And that's not wrong either, you know, for me, that's the other thing, no shame, no judgment. patience and understanding <laughs> yeah it's like uh, like uh, we have our old thoughts old emotions and if you're holding on to them you will be just having all those symptoms it could be uh, being overweight uh, being angry being depressed but when we let go of those thoughts we start having new thoughts from our wisdom and those thoughts get replaced with new thoughts and they are the thoughts of love and understanding. And this is what makes the change. And uh, if there is something that I have to let go of, uh, what I have learned is that I can just say to myself or my wisdom that help me see it differently. It could be like money if I have to pay the bills. It could be anything. I just say to myself that help me see it differently. And then what I notice is new thoughts about that thing. So, yeah, this is how things work. Wonderful. All right, Sean, it has been a great time with you, and I really enjoyed our conversation. Before we leave, uh, those who would like to follow you, where can they find you? Great question. I, I had a little talk with my team this week, and I don't have anything set up. I have a Facebook group. It's called Keep It Simple, um, mm -hmm. Three Principles of Understanding. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on Facebook under Anna Ferrari and my email is info at annaferrari.com I don't have a practice I'm, I'm not organized in that because I feel like I'm still in the unfolding of mm -hmm. it I, I'm quite yeah I've seen that that's the best way to just to be and see what happens. <laughs> Wait and see. Yeah. And I do take action and I would I would answer emails if someone in, sent me a message and you post it and I thought, oh, that could be fun. Uh, and I don't have a lot of negative thinking to overcome. So when something shows up, I'm usually open. So that's, that's the best way we can just have a conversation. For me, this principle is not so much about the conversation itself, but the presence that we share. When we are present with each other, there is something that quiets and there is a feeling that comes and that, that is what really uh, does the heavy lifting. And then we get to enjoy ourselves having fun conversations. So that's the way that I, I tend to relate and work. I'll leave the details in the description so people can follow. I want to Facebook. thank you for creating the opportunity. I think it's, it's really amazing because sometimes people want to share. I want to share and, and having someone else share the, 
the space and have the great questions that you ask. It, it really elevates the conversation. So I appreciate that very much. Good. All right, and it's been a great time with you. Any last words before we leave? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Right. Keep up the good work. I see you're gonna be with with James, and he's mm -hmm. amazing. Rose is amazing, and I spend quite a bit of time with them on Hartfield, wow. and they really, really support this understanding with that feeling, you know, that feeling, that presence, and the wisdom that comes through them. That it's a pleasure to listen to. So thank you for that as well. I'll be seeing you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Right, bye-bye.